Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern Ned Reynolds back in the studio on a Tuesday morning. It is cut day for the NFL, and that's going to happen uh, probably, what, sometime this afternoon. We'll know who the 53-man roster is for the Chiefs. No, I think we'll know by then. The cutting may have occurred before then a little bit, a couple of hours. I'm a little surprised the Chiefs have only made sporadic cuts prior to this, but 3 o'clock today is when they, they being all the NFL teams, all 32, have to be down to the 53-man roster. I think the Chiefs are probably in a bit of a quandary, and that may be one of the reasons why we don't know anything, because they they must they don't know what to do. I, I have a feeling, Mike, that there's probably more going on than what we know about. But Chris Jones, if he's not going to be there, how are the Chiefs going to handle that? And what are they going to do with their roster? Do they keep a lot of defensive linemen or several defensive linemen who might ordinarily have been waived? Uh, I think that's a problem that faces uh, Mr. Beach and company uh, when they take a look at the entire roster on this team. Uh, where do you make, make the slices? Where, where do they come? Uh, what particular phase of the game do you sacrifice some players? Whatever it is, the Chiefs have a lot of them to cut, and that'll happen today. But I don't envy their situation at the moment. But again, I still i am going to hold on to the hope that Chris Jones says, eh, the season's coming up, I'll, I'll, I'll be there to play. Uh, Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out. Like I said yesterday, it was reported he was back in town. We'll see what happens um, at the end of the day. He's, it just, it boggles, it doesn't make any sense why he would be willing to pay fines for about the same amount of money he wants and the difference. It doesn't make any sense to me. But again, like I mentioned yesterday, it might not be about him. It might be the fact that his agent said, I'll make you the top. Defensive lineman, paid defensive lineman in the NFL. And now he's got to do it because that's what he said. And that just <laughs> screws us because thanks a lot, agents. They're the only ones that win. When uh, the uh, MSU Bears open Friday night, what can we expect against KU? They're going to expect a pretty good ba- uh, football team. I know a good basketball team, but that's not what they're playing. It's football, and Kansas has been down for a number of years until last year. Until they revamped their whole organization, got a new coach in there, Leipold, and he. He has done a very nice job. The Bears can also expect to face the preseason Big 12 Conference Offensive Player of the Year. His name is Jalen Daniels. He's the quarterback for Kansas. He helped to rally them last year. Now, Kansas won their first six games and then did falter. But they had a pretty good football team, and they made a bowl game. They'll, they'll play. The Bears, will, the Bears defense especially going to have their work cut out for them, chasing this guy. He's a multi-talented quarterback, but he's not the only one. KU has some very good athletes. KU goes in probably as the favorite, but I'll tell you, don't don't sell the Bears short. I don't think they can win, but that's being defeatist, I know, but you have to face the reality. It's a 1A team against a 1AA team, or FBS against FCS. What a lot of BS that is, too. In <laughs> but the, but the bottom, bottom line is this. I, I, the Bears will probably be outmanned in this game, and over the course of the game... The strength of the benches really makes the difference, and Kansas will probably have the more depth. <laughs> Cracking me up this morning. Uh, Team USA, how are they doing in the World Cup? Won their second game yesterday, and that solidified for them a place in the knockout round. Played Greece and beat Greece 109-81, to about the same margin as they beat Greece in the exhibition. A pretty good performance by uh, Team USA. They're a good team. They played Jordan very early tomorrow morning, like about 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Uh, moi will not get up. To Neither will I. <laughs> Sorry, but, Team USA. But USA is in the round of 16. It's the knockout round. And this is really, after the Jordan game, this is really where the stiff competition begins because you have some good teams. Spain, you have Germany. Uh, these, these are all really top-notch ball clubs. And, Capable of giving the USA a tough time. All right. So uh, last night's Cardinals game in St. Louis, kind of a pitcher's duel going on, wouldn't there? It was for the first portion of the game, about the first six innings. The Pirates had an early one to nothing lead in the ball game. Adam Wainwright again attempting to at least climb another notch toward that 200 victory for his career. He retires at the end of the year, so his time is running out. Did not get it. Pitched uh, fairly well, gave up eight hits, one run, and then departed the game, and the relief corps came in and gave the San Diego Padres three more runs. So San Diego wins the game by a score of 4-1. to one. But not a bad performance by, by Adam Wainwright. He was up against a really good pitcher. 
San Diego has Blake Snell going for them as Snell himself struck out nine. Twelve Cardinals went down on strikes. Wainwright was only able to get one strikeout. That's most unusual for him. But the strikeouts are not what made the difference. Here's the San Diego team, and Mike, this is a vast anomaly in baseball. They win the game 4-1 to one with a 12-hit attack. Four, four uh, runs and 12 hits. They also left 13 runners on base. That's San Diego. Left 13 runners on base. That score should have been a whole lot more lopsided and was not. That's where San Diego, which was thought to have an overpowering team, has really faltered. Their chemistry isn't really good at all. But they win last night 4-1. to one. Cardinals are now 20 games under the 500 mark and 18 out of first place. Uh, Kansas City Royals not having the best Monday either. And here's the real gagger on that. The Pittsburgh Pirates win by a score of 5 to nothing last night over the Royals. And Pittsburgh's winning pitcher is Johan Oviedo, who goes the distance, two-hitter, and yes, folks, a former Springfield Cardinal who got away. Oviedo was traded a year ago in a, a, a deal for uh, uh, Jose Quintana. But you have to give up something to get something, and this is a young player, and he's coming on very well. Two-hit shutout over Kansas City. Springfield Cardinals open up a series tonight, and they will be down at Northwest Arkansas. They are on the road this week. All right. Uh, U.S. Open Tennis Tournament. Day one. Yeah, day one. Day one pretty good. The number one ladies seed, uh, Iga Swantek, won in straight sets. Former Springfield Laser, Victoria Azarenka, who is seeded 18th, got a win and the much-heralded Coco Goff from the United States, she, I believe, is the third seed, the third or fourth seed. She had to come from behind to get her win, but did get the victory. And on the men's side, Novak Djokovic in straight sets, which <laughs> t- took him only a few minutes. It seemed like it was over an hour, of course, but he won his in straight sets. And the tenth seed, the American Francis Tiafo, also got a win in straight sets. So... Competition continues on. More of the top-ranking players will be on the course today at Flushing Meadow in New York. And I know what Ned's doing this afternoon, my guy. You You bet. You have a good one, and I'll see you tomorrow.